the latest console to get the TV out treatment is this, the original Nintendo Game Boy. This new kit features a modern IPS screen, as well as the usual features that go along with it, but now allows you to output video to an external monitor through its on-screen display menu system. We've seen similar kits to this, but they were reserved for the Game Boy Advance and SP. So, is it worth upgrading to this IPS kit for the added video functionality? Stay tuned and find out. How's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today we got another brand new IPS kit for the original Game Boy, but of course there is new functionality in the mix. This new version 5 RIPS kit comes with the ability to output composite video through the link port connector using the included custom AV cable. This is very similar to what we have seen done for the Game Boy Advance and SP IPS kits which I have recently featured on this channel. I made a dedicated playlist if you want to check out the videos I made on those particular TV out kits. And if you enjoy content like this, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for plenty more retro gaming and modding videos just like this one. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to start off by showing you what's included in this new IPS kit. Then I'll demonstrate how to install it into your original Game Boy, review all the features of this kit, including the video out functionality go over the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. So going over the contents of this kit, the first item we have is this custom PCB that will replace the entire front circuit board of the DMG, which holds the LCD. As you can see from my donor Game Boy, the screen has quite a few rows of dead pixels, making it the perfect candidate for this type of mod. The next item is the IPS panel itself, which has the driver board already attached to it on the back. We also have this really nice aligning bracket which I am absolutely thrilled is included. As you know, a lot of these kits do not come with aligning brackets and instead rely on adhesive gaskets or double sided tape, so I'm super excited that this kit had one included. Additionally, you get a ribbon cable which is used to connect the DMG's main motherboard to the new front PCB we're going to install. You also get two strands of wire, some screws which I actually won't be using, some double-sided tape, and of course the custom AV cable to connect your DMG to the television. As you can see, it has the link port connector on one end which will interface with your Game Boy console. And to really make this build shine, I have this appropriately themed Link's Awakening shell from Funny Playing which is IPS ready so hopefully I won't have to do much trimming when installing the new kit. Now if you're interested in picking up either the shell or the TV out IPS kit, Retro Game Repair Shop has provided a 10% discount on all of their products, including these, if you use my link in the video description, as well as the coupon code TITO at checkout. That's T-I-T-O. Great, so that's everything I'll be using for this project. Now let me show you how to put it all together. Alright, first order of business is to disassemble the console. Remove the battery cover and the six screws holding the Game Boy together. Once open, pull out the ribbon cable from the main board to separate the two halves. Then unfasten the two screws holding in the motherboard and the two on the bottom securing the small audio board. Lift the motherboard out and let's give it a quick clean with some isopropyl alcohol. This DMG is pretty grungy and corroded, so let's do our best at cleaning it all up. Now let's move our attention to the front PCB and remove it since we'll need to remove the speaker so we can reuse it. With the board removed, go ahead and desolder the speaker. And since it too is looking pretty crusty, let's give it a quick clean as well. Great, now let's prep the shell. This is an IPS ready shell, so it's already missing two screw posts that we would have needed to remove anyway. However, we still need to remove this fin here. 
using your flush cutters will make quick work of it. And then trim about one millimeter of material on the opening for the contrast wheel as shown. Next, go ahead and drop in the aligning bracket. And then place a small piece of double-sided tape on the bottom portion of the bracket. Peel the release paper on the tape and the protective film on the IPS panel, and then drop it in making sure the top edge of the panel is flush against the top of the DMG shell. I then applied some Kapton tape around the IPS panel to help keep it secured. Now go ahead and tin up the AV and ground pads, and then solder the two included wires to each. I also went ahead and marked the ground wire with a black sharpie so I can keep track of each wire since the driver board will be covered later on. Next, drop in the buttons and membranes. And then go ahead and solder in the speaker into our brand new front PCB. Then go ahead and drop in the new board into the front shell housing and secure it with the included screws. Then insert the driver board ribbon cable into the connector on the large PCB. Moving our attention to the rear shell, drop in the power switch cover and then the original main board from our donor DMG. Then secure it with the four Phillips screws. Next, tin up pin three for the link port connector and solder the red AV wire to it. And then solder the wire we marked with the black Sharpie to this ground pin. And this is what it should look like. Next, insert the included ribbon cable into the motherboard with the blue tab facing up. And then the other end into the new front PCB also with the blue tab up. Then bring the two halves together and button it all up. Carefully drop in the screen lens, put in some batteries, add the finishing touches, insert your favorite game, and enjoy. I think these TV out kits are pretty awesome. While I agree that composite video may not provide the best image quality, especially when viewed on a modern television, when using this on a CRT, I think it actually looks quite nice. Additionally, as expected, the IPS screen brings a much welcomed upgrade to the damaged original non-backlit LCD. Okay, so now that I showed you how to install one of these kits, let's quickly go over all of its features. So as with a lot of these DMG IPS kits, all the functionality is controlled with this scroll wheel on the left side of the console. Scrolling up and down controls the screen's brightness level and it actually boasts an impressive range. Pressing the scroll wheel in will change the color palette of which there are 36 to choose from, so you're bound to find one that you like. Pressing and holding the scroll wheel will open the on-screen display, which allows you to do several interesting things. Looking at the available options, the first is adjusting the screen brightness, which is a bit redundant since you can do that without accessing this menu. Next is the battery display. I think this is cool, and there are several other kits out there that do offer this option, but I find that I don't really utilize it. So while it's nice that it is included, I typically keep it turned off. And next is of course the reason I'm making this video, and that's the TV out function. Turning this option on will disable the IPS screen while it is outputting the signal through the link port connector. I'll demonstrate this feature in just a moment. The next item is called TV mode, which adjusts the aspect ratio of the image being output to your television. Original mode will keep the original aspect ratio in a windowed view, while the full screen mode will stretch the image to occupy the entire screen. Again, I'll demonstrate both of these options very soon. The next feature is Color Adjust, which allows you to fully customize the color of the display. The nice thing is that the TV output will reflect the color palette you choose, which is fantastic. And the last item is Factory Reset, which, just like it sounds, will revert all your settings back to default. Okay, so those are all of the settings available through the OSD menu. 
Now let's dive into the TB out functionality itself. First, you have to of course plug the included cable into the link port and the audio jack on the bottom. Activate the OSD by holding the scroll wheel in, select TV, then select on. This should turn off your IPS screen and then output an image to your television. Here you can see the video quality, which is about what you would expect from a composite signal. It's not the best, but it also isn't all that bad. I think it's very playable and looks fairly decent. Now what's cool is that if you press the control wheel on the DMG, you are able to cycle through all the color palettes, which is great. Additionally, by activating the OSD, you can toggle between a windowed aspect ratio or a stretched full screen image. Here I am demonstrating how it affects the geometry. I myself prefer the original window screen, but it's great to have the two options. And when you want to revert back to the handheld mode, you can turn the TV option off. So overall, really awesome capability, and I love how it's all operated through the OSD menu system. Okay, now that we're familiar with all the features of this kit, let's quickly go over the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, if you don't already have an IPS modded DMG, this kit is as good as any on the market, and it boasts TV out functionality, which is pretty awesome. The image size of the display is identical to the original DMG screen dimensions, which is also great, so you should be able to use any original sized lens. However, if you want a slightly larger screen size, then you'll want to check out the Funny Playing IPS kit. It has a larger screen, which some may prefer. I also made a video on that, which I'll have linked down below. And of course, while the Funny Playing IPS kit does have a larger image, it does lack the video out functionality. Another thing that I really like on this kit is the scroll wheel interface, as well as the OSD menu. It makes navigating through all the kit's features a breeze without the need for memorizing button combinations that I always tend to forget. The included aligning bracket is also another pro. I really think in this day and age, for these types of mods, it's an absolute must, and I'm really glad that this was included in this kit. And lastly, much like all of the other DMG IPS kits, installation is quite easy and I think very accessible to those with entry level soldering skills. You just need to solder two wires for the video out feature and solder in the speaker. Okay, so those are the pros. Now let's go over the cons. The one that sticks out most to me is when comparing this IPS panel to that of the funny playing, it is a bit smaller. As you can see, the LCD panel edges are visible on this kit because this shell is an IPS ready one from Funny Playing and the screen lens is designed for the larger image of the Funny Playing IPS kit. If I were to get a standard screen lens size, I am certain that this will cover the IPS panel's edges of this kit. So while not a huge issue, since it is at least the same size as the original screen, I still have to say I prefer the larger screen of the Funny Playing kit. But of course, like I said, the Funny Playing Kit does not have the TV out functionality, so that is definitely something to consider. And really, that's the only con I could think of. These kits have really matured over the past couple years, and I think these manufacturers have really addressed most of the issues of the past. Now, while one could argue that the composite video is a con, at the end of the day, you are paying roughly a $10 to $20 premium for this feature. Typically, IPS kits for the DMG run at about $50 to $60, and this kit with the TV out functionality is $70. So I think if you want TV out functionality, the extra $10 to $20 is quite reasonable. And if this feature isn't something you want, you can simply purchase one of the other kits available. I think it's great to have options, and I am glad that this kit is available to the modding community. Anyway guys, that about does it for this video. I think this new TV out IPS kit for the DMG is another great modding option for the console. If you have any questions about this kit, let me know down below in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. It really helps me and the channel out. Anyway, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, see you all next Thursday.